a client brought in a power amp to be serviced. It is a QSC RMX 1450. It's a power amplifier, solid state. The specs basically are, as you can look it up in the manual, in bridged mono mode, it's 1400 watts with a 4 ohm load. In bridged mono mode, 900 watts with an 8 ohm load where the client is operating this unit. Or if you operate in stereo mode with an 8 ohm load for each side, it'll be 280 watts, 40 pounds. I'm going to open up the unit for the first time and show you how to repair and replace the worn potentiometers. I'm going to use two, show you two methods to test for worn pots. One uses a fluke volt meter. The other uses an oscilloscope. Both use a signal generator as part of the test. I'll post that schematic later on in this video. There are a couple screws on the left and the right and four at the top that need to be removed. When you remove them, you pry the unit lid up from the back and what it shows you is there are these breakaway hinges breakaway hinge if you will it's just ton and grooved into the front panel that's all it's holding the front together normal warning statements here caution you have to know what you're doing before you do it or there's an electric shock you all know the routine <clears throat> I'm going to move the camera now to show you more of what's inside this unit, where the basic locations are, things that may be some, uh, some interest to you. On the front, we have the on-off switch, of course, the LEDs, which are just poking through. They're not attached. I'll show you that, but we're gonna go through the, the inside of the unit first, show you where everything is and what to look for. First and foremost, this unit weighs 40 pounds. This is why. This is probably, I haven't pulled it out to weigh it, but this is probably accounting for 35 to 30, yeah, about 35 pounds of the total weight of this unit. It's in the toroidal transformer. If you have one of these units that has bit the dust, no longer functioning, don't feel like you want to repair it, don't throw it away. Chances are this transformer is still good. Trans, uh, the transistors are probably shot. The heat sinks are salvageable, uh, highly useful for other projects. You can pull those out, salvage them, sell them. Transformer, pull it, sell it. It's good for, not for another repairing of a unit like this, but this transformer is what you paid for. It's a nice toroidal transformer. The other thing that we need to know before we replace the potentiometers is what is the date of the unit? Well, because on the websites, oh, this is heavy. Before repairing this unit, you need to have a date of the unit. When was it manufactured on or after or on and before? On one of the circuit boards, you'll find this copyright 2006 by the company. When you're looking for parts, and it came into play for the gain pots, is these are the gain pots for any unit, this QSC 1450, produced on or after, I think it was like 2003, maybe it was 2000. But because it was, this 2006 was after the date, I knew then that part will fit this particular unit. So that is where you pick up the date of the unit. It's silk screened right onto the board. Over here is the output. Right below here is the power board. I'm going to move the camera. Here's the power board coming straight in from the toroidal transformer. Power board. There are two fuses in here. The circuit breaker generally for general trip purposes is here. If these two fuses go you have a, a major issue. If these blow, there's suspect in a short that may be part of the transformer or one of the other components here is shorting out. This will take some high-end uh, tech help to analyze why they popped. 
I would suggest for a, your normal do-it-yourselfer, if these are, uh, have blown, I would send it back to the manufacturer. For all other conditions, when this unit trips down, this is a 15 amp uh, circuit breaker that's built right into the unit. I need to move the camera again. Bear with me. Here are the gain pots. They're on, they're built into the last hat section of one of the channel boards. I'll need to pull the, let's see if we can pull that. It's a press fit. Yeah, one of the knobs. It's just a press fit. We'll pull those out. And then the LEDs are just poking through. They're mounted on the board. And then I need to remove this ribbon cable. The, there's a ribbon cable that connects both sides of the board. Goes from one side to this other side. The ribbon cable will need to be pulled. This ribbon cable will need to be pulled. Of course, another screw. The power cables will need to be pulled. They are on spade lugs. And finally, I will need to pull the fan, the fan shroud, which directs air through the extruded aluminum heat sinks. When that's all said and done with, I should be able to take this side of the board, tilt it up, and pull it out so I can gain access to the bottom side of the game pots to make the repair. Let's test the game pots. Step one, I have a, just a small cheap signal generator that I'm using. Set it for a thousand hertz. So that's been adjusted already for testing purposes. I'll plug the signal in. The ground side of the signal coming out of the signal generator must be connected to chassis ground. And for that reason, it, while I, I can test for ground, but listen, because the chassis is painted, it's a bad place to take a ground. So this is very solid ground. So the ground out of the signal generator will be connected to one of the heat sinks the ground that's also uh, going to signal generators going there. This is, of course, going to the fluke. All my grounds will be off the heat sink. I know it's the ground on the PC board. And I'm satisfied with that. Then it's, it's time to, to hook up the probe. We're going to look at the voltage. Now then, what I'm going, since the signal is coming into, uh, I've, I've got the other signals coming in through this wire. It'll, this will be my probe. And as I, I will put it, and I'll, I'll use this for reference, I know that one of these lugs is going to ground. If I put the probe there and my ohm meter reads zero volts, then is grounded out, and as I rotate the knob, as the signal increases, as you see full voltage. I'm using a fluke meter for testing, and what I'm looking for is I want this bar to move smoothly across, and I want the voltage change to be as smooth as possible as well. Volume pots all the way off, and measuring the middle lug. As you bring it up, it's jumping around. You can see the volt just 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 is just jumping around. The bar graph is flickering. It's not indicating, it's indicating there's wear, and then it drops down again. So this pot's worn. We'll go look at the right pot, do the same thing, grab the middle load, lug, turn it all the way down, start cranking it up, gradually, smoothly moving up through the range of the pot. 
and we get to the towards the middle should keep continuing to go up and it's beginning to flicker again this one's in a little bit better condition but it's still yeah still worn okay we have a worn pot both the pots are worn that's how we test it with a fluke meter I can do the same test using a oscilloscope I will I've got it started I need to connect it and I'll show you how to go about that okay I have my oscilloscope set up I'm going to show you it should be a nice clean signal like this and then it should just go from a flat line to a full signal as I go through the range of of the potentiometer gain fully off bringing up the gain midway gains ah uh, look at this it's distorting there's wear on that pot okay let's go to the left pot and frequently I've, I've adjusted this pot enough, it probably also has cleaned it. But the next time you fire up, it won't be so clean. And it's flickering on me. Yeah, see? There's the worst wear spot right in there somewhere. So go through. Yeah. Ugh. See? Wear spot. Okay. That's the two ways of going about this. The, I like this oscilloscope better because it gives me a more, I can see what I'm doing there. And when I hit that one spot there on the, on the left uh, potentiometer, it was glitching on me. You could see the glitch. On the digital volt ohm meter, you, if you're paying attention to the, the volts being measured out on AC, you can start seeing it jump around. But either way is good, but they both tell you that the pot's worn. So now what remains is you need to pull the board repair the pot. There's a couple of features in the repair that need to be pointed out. There's a jumper and it's labeled J268 and another one la labeled J269. It connects this chassis which is ground to this chassis ground at this common point. The reason there's just not one jumper is on the opposite side. That's this landing here. And it goes to a foil trace which disappears here to D103, that diode. The reason I point that out is on this landing and this landing is where this jumper end and that jumper end come through the board and initially I missed it I saw a little wire sticking out here with no solder on it and it wouldn't have operated correctly so I had to go back capture the solder with the lug on the landing for that wire and this wire note here I, I didn't solder the back size lug I don't need to weld this thing in there so it can survive who knows what it just needs to be electrically connected so it's just a, a small solder joint to the outside and to the outside is all that's necessary to keep that frame intact the other thing you'll notice on this board is this this is your thermal shutdown sensor if the bo if the heat sink gets too hot, if this transistor starts to overheat to design specs, this is supposed to thermally shut down the board. On the front, these are your op amps. They're NE 5532P. They're a dual low noise preamp, uh, audio op amp. You can replace them with just about anything, you know, but you, you take responsibility for whatever that is. The reason they're in sockets could be that when you add a signal to the preamp to the this amplifier, if you overdo it, you could actually exceed the design specs, and they would 
ruin the op amp. So if that happens, it's a five minute ordeal. You get the part, you pop the top, unplug, plug one in, off you go, fixes that. Now then, the, the amplifier is this chip here. It is an LM13700M. It is a dual op amp. It has a push-pull output. This is the amplifier. These are your preamps. Simple as that. All the other components are just wiring up the transistors and filters and all that sort of stuff to get this thing operating. This is the extruded heat sink. Approximately an inch and quarter deep. I'll show you how this all goes back together. Okay, now we have to put this thing together. There are landings. There's five. One, two, three, four, five for the PC board. This is the jumper from this board to the other board. This is the harness that is locked into onto the board that goes to the input uh, of the unit. This is your power wiring. The shroud, which sits in front here to the fan, is the it's what actually has the, the nuts. It's threaded, and that's what the fan uh, threads into. It's sheet metal, so don't overdo it when reattaching this. There's some Loctite, which we'll put back on again just to keep the fan into position. This goes towards the back of the unit, uh, towards the wiring harness. It clips over the top of the wiring harness. I'm going to slip the board back in again. It's a bit of a tight fit. Drops in like that. This cable locks in. Once it's down, there's a locking mechanism here, locking mechanism there. This other one just simply slides into position. Then all we have to do is reconnect the wires. The gray one goes in. I need to reconnect a, a wire that also goes to the fan before I connect the rest of this up. But we'll button it up and that's all it takes to replace the gain pots with some new ones. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.